I'm Jonah Yules Murphy. This week, the transcript speaks to the NHS golf teams, dives into Booster Week at Northampton High, and reports on the Black Lives Matter movement in Northampton. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Hello and welcome to our final fall sports introduction. I'm here with Trace Whalen and Caitlin Richmond and we're here to talk about the golf team. So the first question, when you guys arrived on this team as freshmen, the team was very successful and since then the program's taken a little bit of a dip. So what do you think this team needs to do to turn things around? I would say uh, our freshman year, we had started out with a ton of different people and then eight starters of eight left and then we replaced with another eight starters and seven of them left so you know the team the amount of participation has gone down but this year it's actually up it's from uh, previous years so and it, we're better than we were last year we've doubled our wins so I think that um, you know just with practice it will come together again. Uh, so this question is specifically for you what is it like being one of the only girls on a team that is obviously mostly boys? <laughs> I like playing with the guys because it like makes me like hit the ball further than them and like try really hard and like it makes me like always want to be on top of my game so I enjoy it a lot. So golf courses are all very different you know everywhere you go so do you think there's a big home field advantage when you guys are playing at your home course as opposed to going off and playing other schools? Absolutely especially our home course just because of how uh, obscure the layout is compared to other courses? Um, I personally don't think it's that big of a difference. It's just mainly like how you, <laughs> it's just mainly how you play the game. Um, and finally, this is your senior year. It's your last year. So next year when you guys are gone, who do you think needs to step up and play a leadership role on this team? Um, definitely Bradford, um, Monroe, and Aiden Chaplin, and Blake, what's his last name? Crowther. Crowther, <laughs> yeah. So. Why do you think it's those guys? Uh, they, I think they showed the most potential, and uh, Bradford has really improved. He started out the year shooting in the 50s, and now he's down to the mid-40s, and uh, same with Aiden. And Blake, it's actually, I believe it's his first year playing, and he just showed uh, improvements. So, All right, great. Well, thank you guys so much for being here, and good thank luck you. for the rest of the season. Thank you. In other sports news, both the boys' and girls' cross-country teams clinched their league titles on Tuesday. The girls' soccer team will be battling Chicopee Comp for first place in the league throughout the rest of the regular season. The boys' soccer team is looking to win out in order to make the playoffs. The field hockey team has fallen to third place in their league. And finally, the football team suffered their first loss of the season against Westfield last Friday. They will look to get back to their winning ways against Commerce in the homecoming game. I'm Phoebe Jessup, senior here at NHS. This past week was Booster Week, and if you were living under a rock or you weren't listening to the constant announcements, I'm here to give you the rundown for Booster Week 2016. Everything kicked off on Monday. The seniors were the cream of the crop in their farm attire. The juniors went for the gold in their classic Olympic colors. The sophomores greased it up with their 50s leather jackets and the freshmen lit up the halls with their beach vibes. But in the end, the freshmen and sophomores tied for first, with the juniors in third and the seniors in last. The seniors came in first and passed the orange at the lunchtime games.
As the sun set, the parade marched all the way from Florence Savings Bank ATM on Pleasant Street through downtown Northampton. The parade marched to the stadium where the girls varsity soccer team beat Central High School 6-0. The seniors ended up placing first in the float contest, the sophomores in second, freshmen in third, and the juniors placing in last. Tuesday flew by. The seniors and sophomores tied for first in their superhero capes. At the lunchtime game, the seniors proved their strength in musical chairs. Did anyone else fall asleep in class on Wednesday? Pajama day was the easiest dress up day by far, but the sophomores seemed to out comfy us all. The champions of trash can basketball were the seniors. On Thursday, NHS had one last burst of summer with beach day. The grades battled it out in a donut themed lunch game. As the week comes to an end, we reach today, Friday. I hope you're all showing your school spirit with your blue and gold. Thank you so much for a fantastic Booster Week, everyone, but the fun isn't over yet. Don't forget to show your school spirit by supporting our football team tonight at their Senior Night Against Commerce. I'm Phoebe Jessup, and this has been Booster Week 2016. Hi, I'm Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. Black Lives Matter has taken over social media, the news, and reached global status as the modern-day social justice movement. Founded by queer and non-binary women, the hashtag was first created in response to the Trayvon Martin shooting in 2013. Last Friday, two of the co-founders, Opal Tometi and Jenea Khan, spoke at Smith College in John M. Green Hall. This week, I sat down with our local Students of Color Alliance, SOCA, and heard what they thought about the event. The connection it had among so many people, it, it managed to, it, it didn't manage, I, would, I wouldn't say it managed to bring the world together, but it managed to focus a certain part of the world. It managed to focus them on a singular goal, finally, with something that was trendy. Like. Another interesting thing about the movement is that it's sort of, usually in social justice movements, there's one leader, and like, that person sort of leads the whole movement, and there are a lot of other individuals that work really hard, but you sort of have that name. Northampton is a liberal, but primarily white town. There have been recent rallies and posters in stores advocating support for the Black Lives Matter movement. But is that really enough to be considered a racially supportive and liberal community? I went out to interview Northamptoners. Many people didn't want to talk, some wanted to be anonymous, and others were outspoken about the role of social justice in our town. Do you ladies have a moment to talk about Black Lives Matter? Uh, no, thank you, but I, I support it. Okay, thank you. How about we support all lives matter? That's what we should support. Yes. That would be awesome. What's your, do you have another opinion on that? Everybody's life matters. That's not what one would expect to hear in downtown Northampton. A local resident elaborates on the role of social justice in our community. As much as we consider ourselves a progressive liberal community, the reality of how race and class interact and how um, what that means in terms of uh, the sort of dealing with these people sort of being seen based on their race is, is just a reality. Another anonymous resident feels similarly. He thinks liberal and progressive Northampton is, quote, superficial, and wanted to remain anonymous because, quote, if one speaks the way I speak, they get in trouble with the town, unquote. Black Lives Matter means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Now, some people hear only Black Lives Matter. And other people hear Black Lives Matter, too. Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. Make sure to go to nhstechnology.org for more. If you want to be a guest anchor on the transcript, 
Sign up outside room G16 and stop by G16 to check out what we've been making with our 3D printers.